Hello and welcome to my entry for the 2014 MATLAB Senior Link Challenge. Uh, in this video, I'm going to give a quick demonstration of a program that I've written for my fourth year dissertation topic. It's a civil engineering project and it involves calculating the capacity of cold form steel sections in accordance with the guidance uh, set out in Eurocode 3. So let's get this started. I'm going to run the program. Here we go. So this first window is basically the job information for the design um, and a user can input information into this form, which is the company. I'm just going to go to Sheffield for now. Um, and then this data will be, can be exported at the end of the design process to an Excel spreadsheet uh, for, for commercial purposes, basically. Continue. Um, so this is the first main window and this is the overall loading geometry window for the program. So over here in this input values panel, the user can define the column length, so for example 1000, um, and then it can also define the axial loads and moments um, occurring at the end of the column. So I'm just going to add some in now, just um, some uh, preliminary values. So I'll go 50 kN for the axial load, uh, 25 kN per metre around the ends of the column, and uh, 10 kN per metre around the other end. Um, you can also define the end support conditions, so be it fixed, pinned or free. Um, and you can also define whether the section is restrained or unrestrained along its length. I'm really going to an unrestrained section for us. Also over here in this area where there's the picture, you can also plot a 3D version of the channel that you, for the design. Uh, and as you can see, it's a C-loop channel um, in cold form steel. You can also put on the bending axes, the X, X, Z, Z and Y, Y axes. Um, around which the moments are applied. You can also look at the sign convention as well for the moments. So this one here on this diagram is the moments around YY in the positive direction as you can see they're clockwise. You can also do the same thing with the ZZ moments as well. They're also clockwise but they're in a different plane. Um, also included within, within this window is a beam moment calculator which I'll just lay out quickly. And this allows the user to work out the maximum uh, bending moment for a series of standard loading cases. So for the one up here, uh, for a cantilever beam uh, of length L, so say length 10 metres, with a uniformly distributed load A, or over length A of say 5 metres, and a load of say 12 kN per metre, the maximum bending moment is calculated to be 300 kN per metres. Um, and that's useful because you can add it, and add it in to the previous window, into here, into this load input values, and then calculate the section. Um, before I continue, I should also mention as well that the program automatically uh, realises if you input stupid things such as a column length of zero, if you go to continue it will input an error into its input window. Uh, same goes for mechanisms and also problems with the end moments as well. So anyway, I'll continue So that. So this next page has appeared um, for the little torsional buckling and this only occurs if the uh, user uh, adopts an unrestrained section because it's allowed to buckle. Um, Basically, these two panels here, the YY bending and ZZ bending cases, um, allow for automation of the interaction factors for the lateral torsional buckling equation. And the C1 and C2 factors allow for automation of the C1 and C2 factors for the elastic critical buckling moment, or it's called MCR, it's in the Euro codes. And again, this, year, um, this window includes an input error, so that, which prevents users from continuing the stupid values I've chosen in this form. Continue again. So this is probably the main sort of uh, program window and it allows the user to enter the, uh, the geometry for the channel section and then plot it in this region over here. So I'm just going to add some sort of preliminary values to show you. 100, 100, 300 for the web depth, 5 mil for the thickness, 55 mil for the stiffness and 1 mil for the radius. So if I plot this now, this is the channel section. I can also include the compressor stresses as well uh, from the previous loading and the bending stresses around both axes. So I'll show you those. It looks a bit contorted because the, the scale is not correct. It's a better scale to plot it at. Um, I can also select the material properties. Uh, over here is the steel grade. This is a table from the Eurocode. Um, and if I click on one of these and click on yield strength, it will output the yield strength value for that particular, particular value. I can also define modulus of elasticity in the Poisson ratio. The visa set is 0.3 and 210 times 10 to the 3. Uh, a standard for steel, you can still change those. Uh, and then over here in this panel, there's the self weight. You can add this, it's basically the self weight is added differently for a beam or a column. I'm going to choose a column. Um, and for you can also add the cost in as well over in this area over here. So now if I go to calculate, 
basically the, the set, what it's saying over here is that the section is fouled in one of the limit states. So for example, it's fouled under let's have a look. It's fouled under the uh, axial force and bending moment interaction equation. Um, so to make sure we make this uh, pass, I'm going to change the input values over here. 200. And yeah, okay, so that should work. So now our column's a lot more stocky. Calculate. And the section's passed, so it's moved on to the next window. Um, so this is the final results window. Over, over here is the checks and references box, which has uh, an output string of all of the checks done by the Eurocode and then references to the, you know, uh, the various places. So for example, that's a reference in the Eurocode. You can also plot the idealized section as well. So this is the section without the rounded corners. Uh, also the centroid and centroidal shift as well for the section. And the centroidal shift occurs because of the stresses that redistribute within the section due to local and distortional buckling. So you can plot that. Uh, you can also plot the effective sections as well, so the reduced sections that occur from the local and distortional buckling modes. As you can see, they're reduced areas. And also the shear centre as well can be plotted. And all of these can be plotted with values as well. I'll just put that on quickly. Oh, hold on. So yeah, so you can add, add values as well to this plot. Um, and also down here there's the deflection calculator. So the user can add a full UDL to the beam and then work out the deflections for a series of standard cases as well, which is also useful. And then finally up here, you've got the final section capacities and costs. And this is basically a summary of all of the different uh, limit states outlined in the Euro code with the relevant resistances that the section can carry. So all of the yellow boxes are all of the applied loading and all of the green boxes are all of the uh, resistances that the section can carry under the different limit states. And then you can also output all this information to an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to do that now quickly for you because it does take a while. So I've set my file path and I'm going to export the full, stop, the full details. It may take a little while to do, unfortunately. It's a bit slow. Come on. Bear with me for a second while it does this. There we go. So this is the final Excel spreadsheet. As you can see at the top here, you've got the input form data, so the company data from the uh, initial window. You've got the overall geometry and loading. Uh, over here, you've got the cost, mass, and gross area. You've got the section geometry, uh, material properties, axial loading cases, the centroidal shift case, the bending cases around the Y, Y, and Z, Z axis the axial force and bending interaction equation, uh, the shear centre location, and the provisions for lateral torsion buckling. Uh, and this is all ready for printing as well, for to print. It's all set out on three pages, so you can just quickly print this off if you're using it for design purposes. So, um, so that's pretty much it, that's the, uh, the programme. Um, all of the windows include additional notes as well, I should also mention that, uh, which tell you about, about how the programme works. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching this video, and um, yeah, like, link, uh, like and subscribe, I suppose. Thanks.